The Shandong aircraft carrier's full deck of J-15T fighters marks a significant leap in combat capability, but why are the missiles still using the older PL-12 model? The deck is neatly arranged with the world's only heavy-duty carrier-based aircraft compatible with both ski jump and catapult launch systems, yet the wings are equipped with the older generation. What tactical strategies lie behind the upgrade of China's strongest aircraft carrier combat capability? The full deployment of the J-15T marks a historic leap forward for the Chinese Navy's carrier-based aviation force. On the Shandong's flight deck, the new fighter's light gray radar dome and reinforced landing gear form a striking visual symbol. The removal of the nose airspeed tube, adoption of a slanted radar dome design, and internal replacement with a gallium nitride active, phased array radar with a detection range of 300 kilometers. The dark-colored radar domes, and airspeed tubes of the older J-15 models are no longer visible. This globally unique dual-mode heavy carrier-based fighter is redefining the operational capabilities of China's aircraft carrier strike groups. The core value of the J-15T lies in its unprecedented platform compatibility. By reinforcing the front landing gear structure and installing a catapult tow bar, it supports both ski jump takeoff and electromagnetic catapult takeoff. This feature enables China's three aircraft carriers, the Liaoning with a ski jump deck, the Shandong with ski jump and catapult testing capabilities, and the Fujian equipped with an electromagnetic catapult to achieve interoperability among their carrier-based aircraft for the first time. The practical significance is profound. When Fujian's carrier-based aircraft suffer combat damage or fuel shortages, they can land on Liaoning or Shandong for refueling and repairs, and vice versa. This flexibility was validated during the June 2025 Western Pacific Dual Carrier Exercise, where the two carriers conducted carrier-based aircraft mutual landing drills while separated by 1,800 kilometers east-west. Technical upgrades are equally notable. The WS-10B engine has replaced the earlier Russian-made L-31F with a 12% increase in thrust, a 15% reduction in fuel consumption, and significantly enhanced adaptability to the high salt high humidity environment at sea. The wing pylons have been changed from a trapezoidal to a straight design, enabling compatibility with the PL-10, PL-15, and YJ-12 supersonic anti-ship missiles. The airframe has been lightened by 500 kilograms, combined with the power upgrade, enabling it to achieve full fuel, full load ski jump takeoff from the Shandong aircraft carrier with an operational radius of 1,200 kilometers. The revolutionary improvement in pilot experience is evident in the details. Landing used to feel like jumping off a building. Now it's like taking an elevator. The front landing gear, reinforced by 30%, is equipped with hydraulic dampers, capable of withstanding the instantaneous impact of 300 kilometers per hour during electromagnetic catapult launch. When the camera zooms in on the J-15T's wing-mounted weapons, a seemingly contradictory scene emerges. The weapon pylons of these fourth-generation and-a-half fighters still commonly carry the PL-12 medium-range air-to-air missile. This is not a technical lag but a deliberate tactical choice. In modern air combat, mixing and matching missiles is a common tactical principle. While the PL-15 has a longer range and a larger kill zone, not all targets require the most advanced weapons. The J-15T can use the PL-12 to attack medium to low-value targets in actual combat while reserving the PL-15 for high-threat targets. The J-10C fighter jets of the Chinese Air Force have already implemented this mixed deployment model in training. Economic considerations are equally critical. Missiles are precision instruments, and frequent training deployments accelerate component aging. The per-missile cost of the PL-12 is significantly lower than that of the PL-15 and using the former in routine training can significantly reduce consumption. A naval logistics expert explained, unopened missiles have a shelf life of up to 30 years, but missiles repeatedly deployed in training may have their lifespan reduced to five years. During peacetime, we must be frugal. Training efficiency is also important. When pilots conduct basic tactical drills, the PL-12 is sufficient. Switching to the PL-15 before actual combat, ensures combat effectiveness while controlling costs. This strategy of using older missiles for training and newer ones for combat is widely adopted by militaries worldwide. The Shandong's combat capability has not only improved due to the J-15T but also because it has integrated a complete carrier-based aircraft combat system for the first time. The appearance of the J-15DH electronic warfare aircraft on the deck has strategic significance. It is referred to by military enthusiasts as the Chinese version of the Growler, 
but its performance has already surpassed that of the U.S. Navy's ia 18 g The core capability of the J-15DH lies in suppressing fifth-generation stealth fighters. It employs a suppression tactic using omnidirectional, phased array jamming pods to interfere with the radar systems of stealth fighters. When the F-35's radar screen is covered in electromagnetic noise, its stealth advantage is completely neutralized, forcing it into close-range combat, a domain where heavy fighters hold the upper hand. Electronic warfare capabilities were validated in real combat during the Taiwan Strait exercises in April 2025. The J-15D successfully forced Taiwanese warships to shut down their radars throughout the exercise, completely paralyzing their battlefield awareness capabilities. Earlier, during the 2024 South China Sea standoff, two J-15Ds forced a foreign Aegis destroyer to shut down its radar and retreat. System-level operations are the true force multiplier for the Shandong aircraft carrier, the KJ-600 early warning aircraft can simultaneously command 48 fighter jets, with a detection range eight times that of the Z-18J early warning helicopter. During exercises, it guided J-15T fighters to shoot down simulated enemy aircraft beyond visual range, with pilots receiving only a screen prompt, target destroyed, return to base. The Golden Triangle combination of J-15D electronic warfare aircraft, J-15T multi-role fighters, and J-35 stealth fighters forms the world's strongest carrier-based aviation system. As the J-15T squadron on the Shandong aircraft carrier completes its current transitional training phase, more advanced weapon integration is anticipated. The PL-17 long-range air-to-air missile is poised to become a pivotal component in reshaping the power balance in the Western Pacific. This missile, with a range of 400 kilometers, is specifically designed to target high-value assets such as early warning aircraft, refueling aircraft, transport aircraft, and non-stealth bombers. Once the J-15T is equipped with the PL-17, it can launch attacks outside the operational radius of U.S. carrier-based aircraft, disrupting their offensive capabilities. Technical feasibility has been validated. The Air Force's J-16 fighter jets have already been equipped with the PL-17. While integrating the missile onto naval carrier-based aircraft platforms requires adaptation to carrier takeoff and landing environments, there are no fundamental technical barriers. During the June 2025 Western Pacific exercise, the J-15T fighters from the Liaoning and Shandong aircraft carriers practiced a phase strike tactic. The first wave, armed with long-range missiles, targeted early warning aircraft. The second wave, electronic warfare aircraft, suppressed radar systems, and the third wave carried out anti-ship strikes. The coordination of two aircraft carriers demonstrated remarkable combat power. The Shandong and Liaoning form a 370,000-ton task force, equipped with 1,072 missile vertical launch units, establishing a control zone with a radius of 600 kilometers. The two ships' coordinated control of maritime areas is 1.8 times that of a single ship, with a continuous operational cycle extended from 15 days to over 30 days. During exercises in the Guam direction, the two ships achieved high-intensity combat with over 70 aircraft takeoffs and landings in a single day. The intelligent voice interaction system in the pilot's helmets, the high-temperature resistant steel plates along the deck edges, and the 12 flashing red indicator lights during night landings, these details collectively underpin the Shandong's long-range combat capabilities. The selection of missiles under the J-15T's wings reflects a precise balance between logistical efficiency and operational requirements. The three electromagnetic catapult tracks on the Fujian's deck have gaps just 3 cm wide, 40% narrower than those on the U.S. Ford-class carriers. The future of the J-15T is already clear. Equipped with PL-17 long-range missiles, it can precisely strike enemy early warning aircraft and refueling aircraft from 400 kilometers away. The PL-12 missiles currently on the deck serve as a pragmatic testament to the Chinese Navy's transition from deterrence presence to combat control. When 36 carrier-based aircraft's steel wings sweep across the sea surface, each flight path is the clearest strategic declaration 